Okay, so hey guys, it's Quinston and today we're going to learn how to find different permutations of a string. And in order to do this, we are going to look at this example, which I found on the internet just lying around. So uh, the first thing I'm going to start with is the string. We have the string A, B and C. So whenever you start with this kind of a problem, the first thing you take is the first character. So what I do is I take this string and I swap A with A. Now I'm doing this in combination. So I, the first step is swap A with A, then we do swap A with B, then we do swap A with C. With these three steps, we can achieve the fact that A, B and C are starting the string. So like, for example, if you have this kind of a string, you have basically three factorial um, number of strings which can be generated, right? So you can have like three factorial is six. Okay, then if you have four character string, then you have four factorial, which is the whole thing is that you start with the first character, start with the second character, you start with the third character. The same thing here, you start with the second character and you start with the third character. You see where I'm going, right? First character, second character, and the third character will implicitly be always there, right? So basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna swap characters, the first character, second character, and there is no third character. If there was a third character, we'll do that too. For four uh, length strings, we'll do that. So basically, so this is the first node. I come over here, swap A with A, I get this node. I swap B with B, I get this node. I come back to this node, I swap B with C, I get this node, I come back to this node, then come back to this node, I go over here in this node, I have already swapped A with B now, I'll come here, I'll swap A with A, okay, I'll swap, I'll come here, I'll swap A with C, then I'll come back here, I'll come up, I'll come here, C is already swapped, A swapped with C, I'll swap B with B, and I'll swap B with A. So basically, I, I, I'm swapping B with B because I want to print this, right? I mean, if it's here, it can't be printed. Only these values can be printed. So I'm swapping B with B purposely because I want to print them. And then I come back over here and I swap B with A. So that's how the recursion tree for this permutation works. So let's go to the code. So this is the code. So the first thing which I'm going to do is I'm going to say if name equal to equal to main, call main. I'm, I want to define a main function. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to initialize a result. So the result is basically going to hold all our permutations and combinations. I want to make it a global variable so that I won't have to deal with it later, you know, like, you know, passing it in the function again and again for adding stuff. I just make it a global variable so that it'll be easier for us to manage. I know this is not good programming, but uh, an exception for this. Okay, so this is our main function, def main, and it's gonna, you know, start the program, start the engine, you know, initialize shit and everything. I probably shouldn't have said that, but oh well. Uh, then you have the string, the string which we're going to form combinations of, okay? So then we have the length, length equal to string of length. I mean, the length is going to be three, obviously. And then we generate. So generate is the function which we're going to call to, you know, generate the different combinations. Obviously, my naming conventions are pretty awesome. So yeah, string zero is basically the starting point and length is basically the length. I mean, so then we have print result, which is going to print the result, which whatever, whatever we're going to get, right? So yeah, that's basically it self-explanatory in every sense of the word uh, then we go to the definition of generate so in generate obviously we're gonna pass the string we're gonna pass start and the end now this is gonna be a recursive algorithm so you know pay attention because we're gonna use a lot of stacks not literal stacks in like we're not gonna define a stack and then use it we I'm talking about function stacks because those are what this whole program depends upon function stacks then we have current equal to zero this is just a variable which we're gonna use to denote the currently pointing a uh, character then if start is equal to equal to end minus one if not string in result if start is equal to n minus one now start can be zero one two uh, start cannot be three because i denoted in the code you'll see later but if start is equal to two and end minus one end is always going to be three because that's the length we're not going to change the length of the string the length of the string is going to remain the same so if start is two and end is two three minus one is two right obviously math so if start is two and end is two, then we'll go into this block. So then we check if not string in result. What this checks is if this string is not in the result. Yeah, I know, right? Funny English, Python, come on, man. So if string not in result, result or depend string. So what this is saying that is if the string generated is not in the result list, then you append it because you want it in that list. But if it's already there, it's not going to do it. I'm just saying. That's all that it says. So next, we're gonna go to the else. If this conditions, if these conditions are not true, obviously we want to go to the else statement. For current in range, start comma end. 
obviously for current in range so current can have a values ranging from start to end minus one mind you it does not attain the value of end it just goes end minus one then what we're going to do is we are going to say x is equal to list of string now all you people who are using C and C++ do not fret. You won't need to type this. Everything else you will need to type, but this sentence you won't need to type because Python is weird in some cases. You can't make changes in strings directly. So in order to make changes in the string, I have to first convert it into a list and then I have to make changes to it. List is basically an array. Uh, in C and C++, you can directly you know, manipulate the characters by their indexes. But in Python, you can't do that. So I'm doing this in order to make it seem as though it is uh, an array. So then you have temp is equal to start x of start. So basically what I'm doing is I'm taking start and I'm swapping it with current. Right now, I'm just explaining the code. Later on, we're going to see how this actually works with this example. Okay. So then we have generate join start plus one equal to end. Um, sorry, comma end. What I'm doing here is I'm generate this line over here. What it does is it's com it combines this x into a string, adds one to start and passes again into the generate function because it's recursive. And then what I'm doing is I'm just swapping it again. So let's go through the explanation of what this code actually does. I just explained the, the syntax, but I think I, I need to you know do justice to the code because this is pretty awesome. So let's start with the main function. String is ABC length is equal to length of string generate string comma zero comma length okay so string is basically abc zero is the starting position and length is the ending position uh, one plus the two see zero one two plus one length three so you pass it in and uh, you come over here generate so the string is basically equal to abc zero and three so current now is zero so if start is equal to equal to n minus one well no right start is zero and end is three and minus one is still two. So zero is not equal to two. So this block will not be executed. It will directly go into the else block and for current and range of start to end. So current is now zero, right? But I'm initializing it to the value of start. Start initially is zero. So zero, zero, okay? Remember that. Temp is equal to x of start. So if current has the values from start till the end. So temp is equal to x of start, then x of start will be equal to x of current, which is still zero. So zero, zero, zero. So what I'm doing is zero, zero, zero. So what I'm doing is I'm exchanging a with a, get it? Zero, zero, swapping a with a. Then I'm generating the string and I'm passing it along recursively into the, the same function. So I'm, now my start value is initially zero. So start plus one will be one and end is still three. So I'm passing in one and three as my arguments and the string which I generated ABC. So ABC comma one comma three. I pass it in. I go ABC one three. Current is still equal to. Uh, this is the next function. So the previous value of current won't count. This is a new value of current. Just remember that it did say that we are going to use a lot of stacks in this. The function stack, not the actual stack. If start is equal to n plus one. Now what is the value of start? Start is one, right? So n minus one is going to be two. One is not equal to two. Obvious mathematics. Then we go into the else function. So for current in range of start, what is start? It's one right now, one comma n. So start is going to have the values of one. So sorry, current is going to have the values of one and two because the three value is not attainable. So then we go, then we exchange start, which is one and current, which starts from start, which is still one. So we're exchanging what right now? We're exchanging B with B, get it? We're swapping B with B. So generate, what is going to be here? still the same value right abc but this time you're passing abc start plus one start is one one plus one is two okay abc two and three we're passing it in and now we come over here if start is equal to equal to n minus one what is start it's two what is n minus one three minus one which is two so now it goes into this uh block so if not string in result which means a string is not in result well it is not in the result so you go over here result or append or string so our first result or append will be what a b c okay now you might be thinking okay now this is done now what happens so from here it will come back to this function over here because that is in the stack like this is this block has been finished so what it doesn't have anything else to do okay it doesn't have any other function to run so it will directly come back to the to where the last function was called right and then this is the backtracking now we are backtracking we want to backtrack because we want to come back to this state now we we printed this state and now we are backtracking to this state okay because we want to come back and and adjust for the next state which is going to be this one you want to come to this state so we are backtracking we're adjusting this and coming back to this state 
So now uh, what we do is we come back to the previous value. So previously join was equal to ABC in the previous uh, function call start was equal to 1 and end was equal to 3. End is always equal to 3. So we swap it again. We're swapping a uh, start which is 1 and current which is 1. So we're swapping 1 and 1 and we get the same value so, which is ABC, right? So then this loop just gets over. And we come to here, we come here for current in range of start to end. So the first value is done, start. And the first value was 1, right? Now it's going to be 2. So current is going to be 2, but the start is still 1. You get the thing, right? You, you executed the for loop and the first loop is done. And we go into the second loop. So the value of start is going to be 2. Get it? it just, if you're not getting it, take a piece of paper and execute this whole program on a piece of paper and you'll understand it. So 2, right? Uh, so start is going to be a 1 and 2. So start is going to be 2 and current is going to be 1. So we're exchanging 2 and 1, which means we're exchanging what exactly? B and C. 2 and 1. 0, 1, 2. 2 and 1. We're exchanging 2 and 1. So B and C. So we get B and C over here. And in this, we pass in generate A, C, B, start plus 1, which is going to be 2. And we go to end. And the same thing if a result is not in. So we append A, C, B over here it's done right it doesn't have anything else to execute so it goes back into its previous call state which is this one remember so it comes back into the for loop and uh, right now the string is basically still abc but it comes over here now so the current the previous one was for current in range of uh, 0 comma 3 the end one so now it comes back the 0 is done and it comes to 1 right so abc 1 comma 3 so it goes back it says current is 0 current is 1 and start is 0 so um, so b will be exchanged with so b will be exchanged with a Okay, B will be exchanged with A and the same thing B A C will be passed over here and the same thing will be repeated over and over. So if you're getting the gist of what I'm saying, you probably understood what I'm saying, right? There are function stacks and once the, the block is over, the execution of this block is over, it goes back to the previous function call. That's basic logic, right? That's how recursion works. If you did not get the gist of the logic, I think I, I recommend that you take a piece of paper and execute this statement or this uh, program on a piece of paper. But I just explained whatever I could, but my words might not make as much sense as your writing would. So yeah, that's about it for this. Let's run and see what happens. F5, yeah, of course I want to save it. And yeah, this is what is printed, right? And the thing is that it also works for repeated characters. If I say A, A, B, C, sorry, A, A, C, and I save it and I run it, it still works, right? It generates all the values, but they are not repeated because sometimes they can be. Uh, for this reason, I I put this over here. If not result in the string is that the value is not in the result, or if it is, it generates its own, you know, changes. So yeah, that's about it. So thanks for watching. I'll uh, see you guys in the next tutorial. If you have any questions, well, I'm pretty lazy, but I'll try to answer them. <laughs> yeah, thanks for watching. Subscribe if you like this video. Um, you know, watch other videos if you are interested in programming and like data structures. Okay guys, see you later. What the hell?